And welcome to another video from Double Rail. So this video is the uh, first part of an update for um, what's called High Street Station. So this is the uh, tunnel project and you may have seen some um, clips of the tunnel in a couple of the Avent Calendar videos and um, what we're going to do today is discuss why it's here, the concept, the original plan and uh, we're going to show you what's made up the tunnel and basically what's happening next. So um, if you're new here, uh, welcome. Uh, take a look around, have a look at this video, maybe a few others, and uh, hopefully if you like it, you'll, you'll subscribe. Um, if you are a returning viewer, uh, thank you for coming back and supporting. Either way, a lot of people don't realize, and you're probably wondering why my head is like at eye level with the layout, and that's because the layout is actually about five foot or so um, off the ground. And uh, the reason the layout's five foot off the ground is when I originally um, built it, um, we had dogs and, and the dogs um, kind of in the winter time came into the basement. And so I wanted to put the layout at a height where the dogs could mess with it. And so unfortunately we don't have the dogs anymore. Uh, they passed away after um, you know, 17 years, I think 13 years, something like that. Um, but I kept the layout at this level for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's kind of at eye level. So if you're a kid growing up, this is kind of the view of the layout that you would normally have. Um, it's also actually pretty easy to work on. I, I got a step stool and I can uh, you know, get to most parts of the layout. Um, what's interesting about this part of the layout is most of the layout is built with um, two foot wide by four foot long uh, birch plywood. Um, but this section of the layout is actually using um, slightly narrower um, pine wood uh, planks. I think these are just under a foot uh, wide or so. And then um, it has a section here behind me, uh, which you'll see here in a bit. Um, that's just a smaller plywood piece that sort of sits in between. Better view. So this here, uh, part of the layout from about uh, where this uh, chimney stack is all the way down uh, to the end there on the corner. And uh, this is gonna be called, like I said, High Street Station. And uh, the reason it's called High Street Station is it'll come apparent here in a bit, but up here in the upper level, we're gonna have a uh, kind of railway station that sits below um, the city level. Now, if you're wondering where on the layout it is, if you're a returning viewer, um, off here on the left, we have Chippenham Junction and then Right behind the camera, we have um, Brewery Road, and this line that's going up against the wall here, that's the uh, third rail line that runs from one section of layout to the other. Um, this new section that we're adding on the top here is actually going to allow us to come back onto the layout, onto the other line, by coming across here and then going down into the main part of the layout. So, in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a quick recap just so you guys understand um, what was here before and the original plan and, and why I went and changed it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the concept and kind of show you exactly what I'm working on, what I've got done and so on and uh, where I got the inspiration from for different kind of parts of it. And um, we're going to go and test fit the tunnel that you can see here a uh, tunnel's in place. So I'm going to show you what I do to kind of test fit it. I'm also going to uh, do some clearances tests with some rolling problem. And um, I'm going to walk through the modular tunnel, just show you the different parts, how it kind of goes together. So if you're interested in that, it's all 3D printed and I'll make the files available through Trackside 3D in a couple of days. Um, and then what we'll do is I'm going to go through some of the problems I ran into and show you some of the issues that we had and how we're going about to fix them. And then we'll walk through what's coming next for this project. Now I'm hoping to do um, update videos on a regular basis. I'm working kind of three different projects at once. We're working um, High Street Station here, uh, Brewery Road, that's directly behind it. And then there's a little scene to the left of the camera that's part of Chippenham Junction that's new. I'm kind of working on that as well. So 3D printers take a while to print some things. So I have a whole bunch of them that are doing different projects. And so as that stuff gets done, I'm gonna film and then when I've got enough to show you guys, we'll, we'll put together an update video. So you should see an update video for Brewery Road in a couple of days if everything goes to plan. All right, so with that, let's go a bit closer and give you guys a quick recap of what was supposed to happen. All 
right, so this part of the layout was actually built when I did the original um, first part of the layout. So it was built uh, around 2011, you know, early 2012. And I just put the track down, basically complete the, the loop. And uh, over the years, we sort of built it out uh, to kind of have this tunnel uh, section. So the idea was to always have a return track into the second phase. So the, if you look down uh, there in front of the gray wall, uh, there's a piece of track that actually goes down into the station area. And I'll put a link to a couple of the videos that I did way back in, in 2012, 2013, um, that showed the initial stage of that. Now, what I ended up doing was we built the other section of the layout, the third rail line that goes on the inside of um, this tunnel. So the line that's uh, clear over against the wall underneath here. Um, it goes all the way over to the other part of the layout, connects up. So you can run trains from, from this section of the layout, get them all the way over into the third rail line, and then transition them over to the other layout. But the idea was that the trains then come back uh, through a series of viaducts in the front of Bury Road, and then come down here, and then uh, meet that rail down there, and actually have a couple of uh, elevation track elevation videos that are pretty popular, um, kind of showing that. So what I decided to do was uh, this kind of elevation, it was suitable for trains going down it. Most trains could get going up it, um, but it was kind of close to the edge here and it, I wanted to do a little bit more. So originally I used these scale scenes, um, you know, printed card kits. I think I actually looked upside down. Um, so this is just like bits of their scratch building kits. I basically built, um, Retaining walls, scale scenes is great stuff. Uh, you download the P buy the PDF, print it out on your inkjet or laser printer, cut, follow the instructions, and you can build some really nice kits with it. It's really cheap, very affordable. You buy one PDF and then you can print it out as many times for your own layout. Um, sort of like trackside 3D, except for like 2D buildings to, to you know printing rather than with 3D printing. However, with uh, 3D printing, I could build a much stronger structure here and it gave me some flexibility to do things a bit faster than I would have to do if I was printing them and scratch building with, with paper. So what I decided to do was, well, maybe I should put a station up here instead, maybe split the track um, after it comes across the viaduct, so the track would still come down here and then one part would go up there. But then I realized it would be a very small modification to the um, main part of the layout if I was to just bring the track down through here and have it uh, go across the corner section and then start an incline back down into the main part of the layout. All right, so I'm just gonna walk you through the concept. I used uh, some bits and pieces I had laying around to try to help visualize and explain um, what I have going on here. But basically uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have um, the tunnel entrance here and then we're gonna have buildings um, right up against the edge of it, kind of just over towering the, the track. And then if you look over here, there's a kind of tunnel for the third rail line that kind of goes along and uh, this way towards Bowery Road. Now this tunnel is going to extend out on a single track up to about here somewhere and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have above it a sort of um, low relief building, uh, probably a warehouse building or a good store or something like that and um, that will go up uh, part of the back scene. Now you can't quite see it here but there's a part of a low relief brewery um, that I've been working on. It's kind of like what the um, chimney stack that you saw earlier it was for. So it's going to transition this kind of industrial building. Um, it's kind of half relief and then it's going to transition over with a retaining wall or something like that into the brewery that's low relief and then kind of cleanly transition over to that part of the layout. Now um, this whole section with the buildings on, we're going to have a retaining wall that comes across here so that the track can go uh, over the top of it relatively easily. So this whole section with the kind of towering buildings and stuff is um, based uh, loosely or at least inspired by um, the kind of entrance um, just past Farrington Station. So if you're in London and you're going from Farrington Station uh, to Barbican, um, that section of track, I think it's under Charterhouse Street. Um, that whole section there as you enter the tunnel under Charterhouse Street, that is where I kind of got the idea for this part of the layout. So, um, we're going to have these really tall buildings, a low relief building across here, or half relief building across here, and it'll just kind of create this really good urban sort of environment. It'll also allow me to extend 
uh, this out here with a retaining wall and kind of give us this area here maybe to put some um, foliage and maybe some line side equipment or something like that to kind of complete the scene. So that's kind of like the plan there. Um, now Farrington Station itself had this uh, really old uh, Eleanor uh, City Goods uh, Station and I think the building itself has been uh, demolished in the 80s or something but um, I found lots of pictures of it and that's basically probably going to become the inspiration for the uh, low relief uh, or half relief building that's going to sit basically on top of that third rail line and then at the end here where we have the tunnel portal it'll play the edge of the building and it'll look uh, kind of similar to that so that's the kind of style and stuff we're looking for um, I'll go ahead and put uh, kind of Google Maps over this so that you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about so the next part is the actual uh, station itself. So I'm gonna move the camera a little bit and explain how that comes into play. Okay, so I position the camera directly above the uh, two tracks that go to uh, Chippenham Junction. So the idea is I'm gonna take this sanding thing here, sanding block, it's basically gonna be a um, bridge across the tracks uh, that's going to go to here and then this is basically going to be the start of um, some 3D printed terrain it's going to go all the way across um, to just pass where that paintbrush is and the idea with that is that it'll give somewhere for the train track to be installed and allow me to maybe build up um, some building scenery around here as well uh, just to complete that kind of uh, cityscape look now if you look there uh, that's roughly where the track is going to end up and then this is a whole section, so from where you see that kind of tunnel portal, that's kind of temporary. From there all the way uh, to here, this is all going to be a large city scene with the, the tunnel underneath it. So up here, between the top and the top of the back scene, there's going to be a large uh, kind of town, or sorry, not town, a large city scene. Uh, we'll have some, some high buildings, uh, some streets. The street will probably be offset. We offset a little bit here um, so that uh, it kind of looks... A little bit more where I can balance the low relief buildings against some full relief buildings here uh, but it'll look really nice uh, at least that's the, the plan and the idea is to uh, 3d print all of these buildings so uh, I'll be looking at Google Maps looking at photos already got a pretty good idea I've got some of the buildings actually already uh, completed so um, we're gonna go paint those up and you'll see those in an upcoming video so what I'm gonna do now is move the camera a little closer and explain how the station is going to look and maybe some kind of unique features for the station. Alright, so this section here is um, where the station is going to reside. So right where that kind of uh, terracotta uh, colored uh, retaining wall. Now these three retaining walls are not the ones I'm going to use. Uh, these were just ones I was experimenting with a few years ago. And so um, I thought I'd just put them in there just to help visualize. And these, one, these will be at the same height as this basically. So if you look over there it will be probably up to about roughly about here on the um, thing so it won't have the upper part but we'll use a completely different style so if you see here I've got these uh, brick walls that were 3d printed these are just in here to help me measure uh, how long the station platform is going to be this is designed to take about a three car DMU um, so these are about the length of one uh, DMU or mark three or sorry mark um, one or mark two coach so the idea here is that um, the platform will start here at this um, internal entrance and it'll go all the way down uh, to right where the terracotta uh, retaining wall kind of ends, maybe a little bit past it. And the idea is that we will have a um, cityscape above this, right? So there'll be a low relief uh, cityscape above here. And then on this side, we will have a cityscape above the station area as well. So when you're looking at it, basically what it'll look like is that the station here area here is below the um, the city um, street level now one of the cool things I'm gonna be able to do with this is um, I'm going to probably put some archways in here and where you can actually look in so it'll you get this kind of impression that you're actually in the station uh, looking over at the from the platform at the uh, at the train station so hopefully you guys uh, will get some shots of that uh, in the near future when it's set up and uh, you'll appreciate it. Um, so the idea here with the station though is it's going to go into a kind of a tunnel roughly about here and then it's going to proceed around this corner and uh, through uh, into another cutting area uh, just past the corner and then it'll start its 
uh, decline over towards the uh, main part of the layout again and hook back up with, uh, I think, the down line over there. So this part of the station is um, inspired by two um, stations in London. Um, this kind of um, below the street level, it is really kind of inspired by um, Barbican, and it's actually the, the next station after um, Farringdon uh, that I mentioned earlier. So even though these are London Underground stations, I did find some photos uh, where those stations were, were used by British Rail uh, every so often in the, in the 60s and 70s, so or 70s and 80s. So definitely uh, it's plausible to use that kind of style of station. Uh, plus there's other examples that are pretty close to it. So uh, I kind of like the look and feel of it. So that's the kind of approach we're going to take. Um, part of the station, the other station that's kind of inspired about it, or inspired from is uh, South Kensington. Uh, so Count South Kensington Station actually has a disused platform. And what I'm planning to do here is, uh, because I don't quite have enough space to do justice to two, two lines and a platform down the center. We're gonna have a disused platform up on this side, maybe sew some of the rails and maybe some of the uh, foliage and stuff on the track. And the idea is that there used to be two lines going through here and then uh, they got rid of one and then kind of moved this one over so we went through the tunnel. Uh, we'll probably come up with an interesting history for that, but that's kind of like the, the loose idea for it for now. So um, that's where we're going with this. Uh, so let me know what you think, uh, if you have any ideas, any suggestions, uh, any comments. And uh, what we're going to do next is uh, show you the test fit, and then we'll do some clearance testing, and then I'll show you um, how these uh, tunnel sections actually work. Okay, so here we have the um, third rail line, and then we have the, the two lines um, that go to Chippenham Junction. Now, one of the challenges that I have is that this clear, the, both, well, aside from this curve, um, the clearances here are, are very, very tight on uh, both sides. So I'm gonna have to custom 3D print uh, something that has a thinner wall here on the outside. So I think this is a full uh, centimeter on the outside. I'm gonna 3D print one that basically um, goes across maybe three or four millimeters uh, from the corner here. So about three or four millimeters across and then it'll um, kind of gradually uh, span back out to the five millimeters so that it uh, doesn't look any different here on the wall. I'm also gonna shift um, the whole tunnel off to the left by one of these uh, smaller section sizes. Um, and the reason for that is there's a clearance issue on the other side as well as um, I think it could do with uh, moving it a little bit that way just to um, make this section a little bit more prominent. What I've done is I've put these in place and then I've actually taken some coaches. So for example, I'll take the Mach 1 coach here. So I usually start with, and then I'll make sure it, it works on both tracks. And then I will work my way up um, to the Pendolino coaches and the Class 800 coaches to make sure that um, they also make it round the curve without hitting any walls. And then you have to basically adjust um, if it doesn't quite fit. So in my case, I'm actually adjusting the walls on the 3D printer and then reprinting some of it. If you guys are using um, the kit and or you want to use the kit, um, you're going to probably have to move your... Okay, so we're now down the opposite end of the uh, tunnel. Now, before I show you the uh, clearances stuff, one of the things that this actually uh, solved for me was um, now I'm gonna have track coming out here and going through a kind of a tunnel section that's right here and goes around this curve, and then it'll open out into a cutting. Um, this actually solves a big problem for me because while I have this third rail line and the track cleaner and the um, brake van are on, that allows me to get trains this way, but in order to get, and this is bi-directional, but in order to get trains back from the other side of the layout, you either have to go back over the third rail line, cut across um, the up line before getting back to the, uh, the down line. So it was kind of messy. Signaling on it was a little bit... So what this allows me to do is create a higher priority route for the trains, right? So this is going to go around and down and then merge back on um, after going through the cutting and uh, down into a kind of a decline 
and it's going to go down that slope and, and rejoin the down line. So I can directly um, send trains there now. So um, that's pretty cool. So with the uh, testing of clearances, I also use a snowplow. Uh, one of the really nice things with snowplow is it's actually pretty wide um, because the blades here. And so if this goes and makes it around curves and without hitting any walls or anything like that, um, it works out pretty well. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit so you can see um, how this kind of lines up and then also um, what's going on over here as well, which is why we need to move it slightly. So I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to see this on the camera, but basically this track is not quite straight. So this one's straight, um, but this track here is kind of wider out here. Um, the distance is, is wider from this track out here, then it kind of gets narrower as it goes into the tunnel and before it levels out. So this causes a little bit of a problem because it's actually narrower right, right here where this wall uh, needs to be. And so um, it's not causing too much trouble, like this will make it past without uh, too much trouble. If I redo really it this way, you might be able to see it. Um, so it makes it pass without hitting the wall or anything like that, but it's really close. It's a little bit too close for, for comfort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically move this stuff um, all this way. Um, just one of the lengths of the smaller ones. So it's like maybe two centimeters. It's, it's going to move this way. And then what that will allow me to do is it'll allow this transition to happen. Just probably roughly about here. Um, it'll allow it to transition. And so it'll be in the area that's still a little wider. And then that will obviously um, make, it, oops, will make it easier um, for it to, to transition basically. All right, so you're actually looking through that tunnel portal, um, like I was saying, um, where the camera is now, there'll actually be a full tunnel. So you probably won't be able to see this kind of shop. We will be able to get it from the other side. Uh, the idea here is just to make sure that it basically fits, that it's gonna work. Uh, it was more testing the concept than anything else. So now that I know that it works, I'm going to 3D print more of this, uh, 3D print the actual tunnel part here at the wall, and then uh, come up with a design for the uh, retaining walls there in the part of the station, and I'll probably mimic it on this side, but maybe with the arches um, removed in certain places um, so that you can look into the station. All right, so I've waffled on enough, so let's show you guys how the modular uh, tunnel works. Okay, so how does the modular tunnel work? So there are um, three main core pieces to the modular tunnel. So we have the uh, smaller pieces, um, which are like this. And basically um, we have a, a thicker piece and then a thinner piece. This one goes up against the uh, track that's closest to the baseboard or closest to the wall or um, back scene. And then this is the piece on the other side. Now I have two versions of this. Um, you can see here, there's a refuge that's been uh, kind of carved out of this. So when it's 3D printed, um, it 3D prints the refuge in. Now I, there's two different types. There's one with the refuge on the thicker part, and then there's one with the refuge in the thinner part. And so the idea is that um, you'll print out an equal number of these, and then uh, of each type, and then you'll print out a, a number of these um, larger ones that are thicker with no refuge. And the idea is that you will, whatever length of tunnel that you need, you'll, you'll print out so many of these, print out so many of these, and then you basically stagger them. So you'll have, um, you might start off with one where it's in the, the thicker part, you'll run the middle section, and then the next one you put here will have the um, the thinner part and, and so on. And you basically work your way uh, down that way till it's done. Now, aside from this part that forms the structure, so you've got the tunnel part, and then you got, this is pretty heavy, it's 3D printed upside down like this. And then that means you don't need any supports because it can print these refuges out without, because they're flat against the top. Um, it also puts any kind of um, surface issues you might have with your printer on the part that you're not gonna see. And then depending on what kind of surface you're printing on, you can make this like PEI or whatever you want. So aside from that part, and um, we also have the brick walls that go on the inside. So if I, uh, Put this aside. Um, so the brick walls um, come in two types. There's a thicker part that's designed for the inside wall here with the larger uh, part and then there's a thinner one that's designed to fit on the thinner wall and it's just narrower to make sure that there's clearances. Now you 3D print these flat so they're 3D printed um, basically like this 
I'll show you. So you 3D print them um, flat like this. They take about an hour on the 3D printer and they don't use a lot of um, filament, but because it's got to do all the brickwork uh, movements, it can take a little while. Now when it comes off the printer, you end up with something like this. I don't know if you can see it very well, but sometimes the 3D printer will just leave little dots on the very top of the surface where the nozzle is lifted off. Um, now on this one it hasn't done it, but depending on your printer and how well tuned your printer is, it can create some of them. It, it's easy to fix that, you basically take um, 80 grit sandpaper, I use sandpaper sticks, and you basically just sand it uh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for uh, about a minute or so. And then you go and lightly sand it with 180 and then 160 and you end up with a, a fairly decent finish. Now I've tried various different painting techniques. Um, the one that works the best is uh, the one that um, Dave over at Dean Park Station recommends. So the way that works is pretty simple. Um, what you do is once it's printed out, uh, you basically paint uh, the whole thing with a whatever color you want the mortar to be. Uh, in this case here, I printed these gray and then um, I use this sort of antique white and pewter gray mix that kind of creates a cement uh, mortar type color. And you let that dry and then basically um, you dry brush on the, the colors that you desire, right? So here I had dry brush some engineering um, blue brick and then I went back over different sections of it with a bit of green uh, mixed with gray to sort of uh, give an appearance of kind of like algae and kind of water sort of dripping down and then went over it some brown as well to kind of give this kind of dungy kind of look. And uh, I did it to a lesser degree with uh, this one here. I just give a couple of different variations. You do have to be careful with the brush parts. You don't want to get kind of uniform sections, but when this actually goes in the tunnel and uh, you look at it up close, it actually looks um, really good. And it's same kind of results that you would get if you were to use, um, you know, plastic card uh, or, or that kind of stuff with the brick patterns on it. So um, there are two other components and I will show you those. So, the two other components are um, this piece here. Now these are to make it a bit easier to install. So this is for the thicker section. And if you look real carefully at this, I don't know how easy it's going to be to see this on the camera. Um, but basically there is a, a slight lip on either side. And the idea is that you will fit the thicker part in there and there's enough clearance for uh, the brick wall to fit in on, on either side. So you'll be able to fit, fit the brick wall on this side and on the inside as well. And so the idea is that you'll, because there's t a tight clearance between this and the roof, you'll just be able to slide the um, brick wall in and it'll stay in place and then you can just kind of PVA glue it and whatnot. And the other side um, has a thinner here, as you can see here. Uh, these are printed in translucent black uh, PLA from uh, Hatchbox. And the reason I use the translucent black is so that the brickwork would potentially still show through if any of it kind of covered it up. Um, but also so that um, the base didn't really look like it was there. Uh, so this blends in pretty well. And you can see just like the larger section, there's a kind of a ridge. So the thin part fits into this and then along with the brickwork and then it kind of holds it in place. And the whole point of this is just to make it easier to install. Um, it's fairly easy to install one or two sections without it, um, but when you're installing six, seven, eight feet of it, um, they can start to move around and you lose positioning and it's not quite straight. Um, so it's just a lot easier to put those in place. You know it's square and then you're good to go. Really simple to put together. Uh, you print out the parts, you, know, you test fit it, uh, you get this in the right place, screw it down, put it in, make sure it works, and then you glue in the smaller sections on the other side. And uh, that's really all there is to it. And now it takes a while to print. I printed these on about three different printers. Uh, they print well on the Ender 3, Ender 5. I think I was using the uh, FL Sun Super Racer. I've also printed one or two of them, uh, these smaller ones, on the uh, Soval SV06 that I recommended. So. It's um, very easy to do. The, a lot of brickwork was printed on both the Ender 5, uh, the Soval, and the uh, FL Sun V400 that I have. So on the v V400, this took less than an hour to print. 
so it's uh, relatively easy to do. So, um, one section that we have here um, that's sort of right slam in the middle of where the station is going to start. Um, we have this section here and where the delta is, I'm actually going to still continue the line uh, from the original plan, but it's basically going to stop here. So we're going to have like an, another station down here, maybe a lower level station, um, either single platform or two platform, and I'll just terminate uh, down here. But what it will let me do is it will let me extend the cityscape um, down to here, right? So we'll be able to have um, a section here, maybe some internals in the um, in the station, and then maybe stairs up all the way to the the top of the level. So there might be a kind of a cool uh, stairwell or escalator or something here, where you can uh, see all the way up to the street level. Now, I'm not sure what else I'm going to do. If I'm going to just stop um, the street level here, or if I'm going to continue um, some kind of continuity into the Chippenham Junction, um, still thinking about that. We'll have to wait and see. So the other thing I was talking about earlier was the, um, you know, the, the actual view of the station. So the idea here is because um, this is high above your, your viewing angle, um, I'm going to put probably some arches in here and some of them will be blocked out uh, just like an actual station, but others will probably um, have an opening in it. So I can put a camera in there, but only that uh, when you're looking at the layout in person um, up here, you'll be able to see uh, some of the train movement, so it'll be almost give you that impression that you're um, standing on the station platform or looking into the station platform um, from inside the station building. So hopefully it'll be a kind of a cool effect. So I was going to just show how easy it is to hopefully install this brickwork. So at the uh, brickwork here, you can see I, I kind of weathered the bottom of it a little bit more on either side. So it's easy to tell it's the bottom, but I also painted uh, the tops and the sides. And when you do that, it kind of creates a nice uh, kind of outline around it as well. And so basically what you have to do is just angle it in slightly, get it into both like so. And then as you get close to the edge, you just push it in place. Now obviously you would uh, PVA, not as bright. All right, so hopefully you guys can see the brickwork there. And like I said, that's from just a small gap because these aren't secured in place yet. So they're just opening up a little bit. So you can see there it's installed um, really well and uh, looks pretty good. So what we do next is install some on the opposite side and give you guys the full Okay, so I did run into a few problems. Um, so after I installed the back scene, uh, it went in fine. You can see it, it went in reasonably well. It matches up pretty nicely up here. And what unfortunately happened was uh, about a day or two afterwards, the adhesive seemed to um, just fail in certain places. And so it kind of created these weird looking, uh, almost like folds. It's like the material on the back scene kind of um, got bent or kind of disfigured. So it's done this in a couple of places. There's this kind of line here, this line here, and it seems to be related to the adhesive because it went down fine with no bubbles. And I've done several of these and other sections of it are perfectly fine. And the wall was absolutely clean and, uh, and put into place. So I think there's just, I don't know if it's because I had these for about a year before I installed them. So I don't know if the adhesive is no longer good or starting to fail, but I've had this happen in um, one place uh, further down here, but it's easy to mask because there's uh, gonna be a building in front of it. And then here, luckily, um, we'll have the build, you know, the tunnel here and then the building on top of it. So this will not be visible. And the part at the very top, you can't really see. Um, there's a section right behind this that's pretty bad. And then there's a really big section on the next part of the back scene that's not great either. 
um, but luckily those will all be covered by um, the buildings. But that's just something to be careful of. Um, these newer ID vaccines don't seem to be as good as the ones I installed a few years ago. Um, I'll, I'll put a link up here uh, to the video uh, showing me how I installed the ones before. But uh, yeah, it's just, just something to be aware of. And I wasn't the only one who posted on the uh, Dean Park uh, Station Facebook page and a couple of people had mentioned they had run into similar issues where it had worked fine for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then uh, popped and did the same thing. So it's a bit unfortunate. Uh, if you got the, pre these are premium self-adhesive ones too. So maybe there's uh, an issue with their adhesive, which is uh, unfortunate, but we, we can work around it. So I have a few others, so hopefully they won't do the same thing, but I'm kind of apprehensive now about uh, installing them. So we'll have to see how that goes. So one of the other problems I ran into was with this uh, Pico uh, third rail. So this has been here for almost a decade. It has these uh, plastic rail chairs that are kind of glued in. And in a couple of places, the rail chairs are basically broken. And so what I ended up doing was, I think yeah, here and somewhere else, uh, maybe at the front here, um, I replaced those broken chairs with basically track pins and glued them in place and then uh, glued and painted uh, the the track pin and then basically what I did was I glued the track pin to the uh, third rail so once it was in the right position uh, I glued it held it down and then uh, applied a little bit more paint uh, just so it, it looked okay it looks reasonably good I don't think that there's any problems with it and um, I also bent the third rail out a little bit uh, away from the track it kept catching on some of the um, lower locos and it was causing some issues so um, bending it out seemed to, to stop that and then prevent damage to the third rail but uh, it's you know pretty cool um, and fairly easy fix so that's a good tip for you um, and uh, the only other issue I ran into was uh, with 3d printing the bricks here uh, I had to experiment with a couple of different depths they all turned out really nice but when I started to paint and then try to do the dry brushing technique um, it, it didn't always work very well uh, there was also an issue where I tried to use the technique um, where you basically uh, paint them all um, brown or, or red or, or whatever color you want to paint it and then you apply the mortar color and then brush it off or, or wipe it off and um, that didn't work very well on the 3d printed bricks I'm not sure why and um, it worked a little bit better on the thinner bricks uh, than it did with ones with the the deeper uh, flanges uh, I don't know if the paint was uh, too thin or or what and um, I got a reasonably okay results from it when I used the uh, terracotta uh, filament so there's no paint involved and uh, I just put the, the white paint over the terracotta filament and and that turned out reasonably okay but it was still not as good as uh, using the dry brush tech. So one thing that I like to do is to try to uh, film the train coming through the uh, the tunnel on a few different angles just to kind of get a feel for how it's going to look. That'll give me an idea of anything I want to tweak in terms of the starting position for the tunnel and so on. I'll try this at different speeds as well. So um, one interesting fact about the tunnel is um, where it's going to start uh, from here, uh, from the third rail line and go all the way around and exit the tunnel um, here over on this part. It'll actually be over uh, 10 feet long. Um, the section that's here, that runs from there uh, to there, is a little bit over six, six and a half feet long. So it's a pretty impressive uh, tunnel. All right, so what's next for the tunnel project? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this uh, chalk, uh, piece of chalk here. I'm actually gonna write on each one of these all the way down. So I'm gonna just number them. You got one, uh, two, uh, three, and, and so on, all, all the way down. Uh, just because they are um, different. So each, this one here has the um, sequence uh, you know, it's got the refuge on this side, then you have this, and you've got refuge on the other side. So rather than moving them all out and then trying to uh, figure out when they, which sequence they go back into, I'm just going to write on them like this. And this will come off um, pretty easily. So if I uh, rub it off, it's going to come off. Um, just like chalk and anything else, it'll come off pretty easily. Um, but the other thing too is I'm going to put the street scene on top of this anyway. So there's going to be another 3D printed surface like it was on this that holds the track and everything else. So um, I'm not too worried about chalking on it. 
So one of the other things I'm going to be doing next is uh, taking the tunnel here uh, all the way down and basically moving each one of these parts um, about two centimeters um, towards the camera and that will hopefully uh, fix the clearance issue that we had down here and then we'll retest the whole thing for clearance the same way snow plow, track cleaner car, um, Mach 1, 2, 3 and Pendolino coaches down the other end and then we'll run the, uh, the Deltic through it again. And then if that all works out, um, what I will be doing is installing the base parts. So the parts you saw um, that will get screwed down, um, those will get installed here. We'll test fit again, make sure that works. And um, while I'm installing that, I'm going to be 3D printing um, more of the, well, basically 3D printing more of the brick walls. I think I have like three or four pieces I still need to print. Um, I'm going to be 3D printing the base part that goes on top here. And um, we'll be continuing to print a various set of projects related to it. So it'll take uh, a couple of weeks to get that done. Aside from that, um, one thing's going to be doing is on the third rail at different points down here, probably where it, it moves from, from left to right hand side, I'm going to be adding some blue LEDs and maybe some white LEDs. And those are going to be connected up to either an ESP32 or an ESP8266. And they're going to handle the, um, the arc effect on the third rail. So the idea is, as a train goes down, we'll use the ESP32 or 8266 to detect the train. And then that will trigger a delay or kind of random delay. And then we'll, we'll put the arc effect in place. So there'll probably be three or four different LEDs um, down. And they won't all activate each time. But the idea is that it will kind of randomly select which one's arc and then you'll kind of get a kind of a cool random arc effect. So I'll do a video on that. Um, I already have it done before and it works. Um, so it's just a matter of getting those installed, hooking up the wiring and, and giving you guys a video on it. Um, I'm also going to be installing the cable troughs. So I 3D printed um, a whole bunch of these cable troughs and um, these are basically I think some people refer to them as cable trunking, but the actual proper name for them is uh, concrete cable troughs. And these are going to go um, down along the side here, and they're actually going to be used to carry um, some of the real wiring cables um, for the layout. And then there's a, a kind of drop down for that through the through the um, layout itself. And I've got two or three places where I'm going to install those. And then I also have to break um, this line here and the third rail line up into blocks. I think they're both gonna probably be just one big block for this section, um, but it does mean some extra wiring. So I'm gonna do that, run the wiring solder to the track and get that done um, before we do any kind of ballasting. Assuming that works out really well, and uh, we'll do some final tests on it and make sure everything works. We'll put the brickwork in, make sure all the clearances work okay. And then um, if that works, um, we'll add some extra details, maybe some speed restriction signs, some other details within the tunnel itself and around the entrances. And then we'll basically ballast it. So we'll ballast um, the whole section through here, obviously with the tunnel off, and then we'll reinstall the tunnel, add any other extra details you want, and then it should be. So I suspect it'll be probably two or three update videos uh, to get all that done. So I'm planning to try to do this weekly um, as my schedule permits. So uh, hopefully you guys will, will see some good progress on this. My goal is to get this section of the layout done um, before uh, springtime. So um, before the end of this uh, this first quarter of 2024. So we'll see how I do with that. Um, you guys might do me a favor. If you don't see any update videos after about two weeks on this, uh, you might start dropping comments and remind me that I need to get it done. But hopefully you won't have to do that. So you can see there, I've got the brickwork on, on both sides and it, it works pretty well. So um, what we're going to do next is I have put together a couple of clips from where I um, took out this section of the layout um, before we put the tunnel in. So you guys can you know have a look and see um, what it took to remove that kind of stuff. But um, aside from that, 
that's going to be it for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got a bit of a taste for what I'm going to be doing here in uh, 2024 in um, High Street Station. So I hope you guys like the concept. If you got any feedback or suggestions or um, any kind of uh, comments at all, you know, please go ahead and, and put it in the comments. And uh, thank you if you uh, survived this point in the video. All right, so that's it for today. Um, enjoy the removal section that's coming next in the video. And until next time. All right, so over here in the brewery road part of the layout, uh, you can see here the ID back scenes, terrace house, um, back scene kind of just stops right about here. You can also see in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to weather and kind of detail some of these uh, trees as well as the 3D printed location cases or um, relay boxes. And so today what I'm going to be doing is installing a new back scene um, along here. It's another ID back scene. I'm going to be installing uh, two of them actually. They'll go back to back and they'll clear go clear down to the other end of the layout. Uh, but first I've got to clean this up because um, you can see here I had some scenery that was attached to the wall and it's uh, when I took it off it kind of tore away some of the uh, paintwork and so on. So when I try to attach the premium back scene to this and uh, there's a risk that will end up picking up this kind of ridge that you can uh, feel right there. So what I'm going to be doing is just using a sanding block and basically just smoothing this out so you can no longer feel it um, and it won't take a lot to do it. We'll just sand it back a little bit. Now that should start to smooth it out. It's already starting to smooth it out. So a couple of passes with this and we should be good. Yeah, it's almost, almost completely gone. All right, so that should do it. I don't even think I need to cover it up with paint. Just wanted to remove um, that kind of residue, kind of texture feeling you could see. I have another piece like here that needs to be done. And um, what I'm gonna do as well is just remove uh, some of this foliage here that might interfere with the back scene and we're going to go and clean um, the entire wall uh, with some uh, some simple um, water and um, kitchen roll. Uh, we can also use um, you know, for stubborn parts uh, rubbing alcohol. Alright so I'm over here by the retaining wall um, one of the first things that you probably want to do before you do any kind of major work on your layout is to make sure that the rolling stock is not sitting on the track where it could get damaged. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I uh, had some rolling stock here I was just using to test some clearances. So we're gonna go and completely get that stuff out of the way and make sure it's okay. And I also have a coach here that I was using. So I'm gonna do that as well. And that's usually a good idea just to do a bit of a, a survey and make sure that you've got everything else uh, removed. So kind of look up and down your line and make sure you've got all the trains out of the way. Okay, so this is the uh, part of the tunnel um, here that we're going to be removing. Uh, we're actually gonna remove um, both the side of the uh, retaining wall as well as the side retaining wall. I have to remove this side retaining wall in order to put the um, back scene in. The good news is that most of this retaining wall is only stuck to the wall with double side aids and painter's tape. So it shouldn't cause too much damage and it should be relatively easy to come apart. Um, this side is going to be a little bit harder. It is actually um, PVA glued to the baseboard. So I'm probably going to have to cut it out, maybe sand it. Uh, there's also uh, some scenic work on the other side of this wall um, that had some sort of looks to be ballast or kind of scenic um, stuff glued down on top of it. So I'm going to have to clean that up as well. But basically the plan here is like, there's also some stuff like this, which is the uh, relay box that will just come off. I think it's one of those uh, scale scene ones. So we're gonna basically go and remove um, all of this wall um, off all the way down and all the way uh, this way. And then we're gonna clean the wall up, put the uh, new back scene on all the way um, from clear, clear all the way down there where the uh, railway side terrace is on Brewery Road and all the way back and about two or three feet um, behind the camera and it'll swing around and we'll have a different back scene um, going through the main part of the layout. So this part here, which is a Pico uh, kit, and I'm gonna probably keep this, but I'm gonna maybe mix the name with the 3D printed stuff, but it's going to, um, just because it's kind of cool and 
I, I kind of weathered it pretty well. So I'm going to try to keep this as for a nostalgic uh, point of view. As it's in this part's been on the layout for a long time. So I'm going to go in and pull this out. At the same time, there's some uh, third rail work here. I'm going to go and clean that up in a few places. It was kind of catching on things and not, uh, not quite working as well as it should. So I'm going to try to clean that up as long with the wiring as well. All right, so let me uh, get to work on this and we'll show you the progress as we go. Okay, so you can see here what I was talking about. It's uh, basically just stuck on to the wall using double-sided um, painter's tape. So it's not gonna be too bad. You are gonna pull off parts of the paint here and there. But like I showed you earlier in the video, we'll just sand it down as we go. Um, the trickiest part of this is actually going to be the uh, third rail. So the third rail is a real pain to get in as anybody who's ever tried to install the stuff will tell you. Um, so when I'm pulling the wall out, I'm actually going to have to pull it back from the wall and then kind of lift it up as I do that so I don't hit the third rail and potentially knock it out because I really don't want to mess with that if I don't have to. All right, so here you can get kind of a close look at the wall. It's just a card. Uh, I used I think card stock that they use for um, framing um, picture frames. So it's like the picture framing kind of card. Um, but you can see there what I'm talking about, right? You, you look at it at different angles, there's no texture whatsoever. In fact, you kind of have to look at it to see the, the brickwork at all. So I'm hoping to replace this with a uh, 3D printed tunnel with um, 3D printed brickwork. And hopefully that'll look a lot better. Um, likewise, I'm going to be taking out the um, boiler here too. I'm going to work on 3D printing something like that as well. Now the interesting thing with the boiler is I actually built it on its own uh, kind of base. So I should be able to pull that out and reuse it for something else without um, too much effort. Okay, so you can see here, I'm gonna have a fair amount of time um, pulling all this wall out. So uh, I'm gonna get to that and we'll show you some of the progress as we go. Okay, so it doesn't take too long. It's taken about five or, or 10 minutes or so to carefully remove um, most of this wall, you can sort of still see there's some of the wall uh, sitting out there. Um, apparently I was really clever and I uh, used some matchsticks or something to, um, you can see the glue residue, to hold that wall in place. So I'm going to have to get like a scraper or something and pry, or a screwdriver and pry those off. So um, you can also see I had written on the wall with some pencil when I originally did the original wall and that was actually um, because I had super glued the upper ledge. So while this was uh, taped on, there was a small piece that was super glued to the top here that kind of provided the card um, lip to, to rest on top of it for the tunnel. And so that's kind of left some residue on here. So I'm gonna need to get some slightly coarser um, sandpaper to smooth that out and then run it over with the sanding block um, to get the rest of it out. Um, luckily, there is a nice um, back scene going on this, otherwise my wife might not have been too happy with me with the way this is uh, torn up the wall. So um, I'm gonna go and try to get the back scene on there before anybody notices. Um, also, I had uh, put some larger, I think three millimeter LEDs around the third rail to sort of provide that flicker effect. Um, the wiring for those was not great and I thought I could get away with it because it was kind of hidden in a tunnel. So um, I'm going to be replacing those with uh, service mount LEDs and hide the wiring uh, in such a way that you can't see it at all. So hopefully uh, that'll look a little bit better. And the only problem I have currently is there's a wire, you can probably see like right about there. Um, and it's kind of got an LED that I super glued to the third rail. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get that out without tearing anything else up. All right, so I'm gonna keep working on this and uh, we'll show you some progress uh, as we go. So this is going to be removed and luckily it's pretty straightforward. Came uh, right off. I had just had some super glue there and some super glue down here. And you can see there, it was just the, the girder uh, glued onto some card and then looked pretty good, but now it's been removed. And we'll, we'll hang on to this. So I'll strip the card off of this and then we'll reuse the girder and the um, final 3D printed solution. 